Woo! I see you, Hartley. <laughs> Live from Cape Coral, it is Hartley with her bottle and her little twirly hair on top. What's up? <laughs> I see you. I see you. There hey. she is. Nothing wrong with daddy's girl. I see she's got her eye. I saw your eye. She was looking. She was like, right next to your arm. And I was like, I see you. Hey, That's Claudia, awesome. can you come grab the babies? That's awesome. I love it, Hartley. I love it. That is great. And this is Otto Weston. Otto in the house. What's up, my man? Otto. Yeah? Ball? I'm looking for a star. Where's a star, Otto? Star? Is that mama brushing your hair? Tell her you like it wild and loose. What's up? Yeah. There's Claudia. There's Otto. Dude, you got a haircut, bro. You lost your hair. What's up, girls? Love it. Love it. Absolutely awesome. Love you guys. We got to get together soon. Hopefully uh, next week. Take the ball. Take the ball, Bubba. See if we can get together next week. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, let's see. We're a minute and a half in. So welcome to Truth. And uh, actually the first Truth of 2021 coming at you live with what the message of Truth. I'm Tony Perez. And that right there is TP. No, oh, TL. you're TL. <laughs> I'm, I'm TP. TL. He's TL. I'm TL. I'm Ma Tia, <laughs> let me uh let me put our names up here. There we go. So there you are, so you don't mix us up. I'm TP, that's TL, and welcome to the first truth of 2021. We come live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. unless we are on the road or something and we got to do earlier or later. But uh bear with us as we uh figure it all out, just like you guys are figuring it out. But welcome, everybody. What's up, brother? How you been? Oh, man, I tell you what. Um, I don't really remember this last week, but... <laughs> it's all a blur. You know, some sometimes you get put in a, in a mix, and what God expects out of you is just to be present. You know, it's like you don't really know what's going on. Right. Go again. Uh-oh, that's all right. You know, Go with it. story of my life. One it's the story of, of my life. Bum, 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 bum. And we got Nick Jonas. It's the story of my life. Uh, yeah, can you come grab the babies again? It's, it's been good, though. It's just I, my family has yeah. been a, in my life more than they ever have lately. Is your uh, your good. volume seems a little low. Do you, uh, is it raised up a little bit? Just double check it. Yeah. I say my uh, my family has been a part of my life more than they ever have, and, and they need me more than they ever have. So it's it's uh, I think that's I think that's the blessing of this last year is is that heck, heck yeah not nothing wrong with that right <laughs> yeah you and and the thing is is sometimes sometimes when people are um you know going through that with their family they could kind of. I don't know, get discouraged and be like, you know, no, you know, I got to do this. And, and it's, that's not the way. So uh, Tim's been finding that out the hard way and uh, rolling with the punches. And uh, it's been good. I, it's been good to see your growth. Uh, it's been good to just kind of see both of you guys grow into that role. And for me to just kind of be alongside you when I can be and encourage you guys that, you know, keep doing what you're doing. You guys are doing great. So it's all good. Yeah, I, I tell you what, um, you know, this last year for all of us, there was a moment that we had to jump into endurance or we just kind of lay on the ground and cry. And I think I think <laughs> sometimes there's a little bit of both. Right. Um, but I feel like there was a lot more endurance that was produced versus the laying on the ground and crying, you know. Right, right. Um, you know, just just for this next year, I really feel like what God's putting on my heart is is a humility to understanding that everything that is is here in front of our eyes right now was given mm. to us from him not there's nothing that you could do without him and i think that's i think that's something that just to, you know if there's a kickoff for for nfl i feel like the kickoff for 2021 for me was god was just like 
Without me, you are nothing. <laughs> Without me, you are nothing, dude. It's so it's so true, man. I, and and I think, well, actually, it's funny. So Tim and I haven't talked uh, briefly. Uh, I was like, dude, get some rest because I know you're running around with the kids. And then uh, he didn't get that rest. Maybe he got five minutes, and then <laughs> he had to go out. But him and I actually haven't talked about the first message of the year. Um, but, uh, the title is here. I'm going to go ahead and put it on, uh, and then I'm going to kind of, uh, throw it at Tim and what I was thinking, what the Lord put on my heart. And, uh, we're just going to wing it just like we always have. But, uh, what was on my heart, Tim, and you just kind of touched on it is okay. It's a new year. Now what, you know, it's a new year. Now what? And, 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 and I want to leave it, leave it open to everybody to kind of chime in on that. But okay, it's a new year. What do you have planned for this new year? Or it's a new year. Now what? It's like everybody builds up to this day and this year. Oh man, it's new. It's this. It's that. And uh, what do we do? <laughs> Where do we go? Where do I put my trust in? So I want to kind of talk about that because I think I think we build up. It, it's like the society we live in is very event driven. It's very like highlight climactic let's get to the punchline and let's get to the next one and the next one and the next one and the next one and we are definitely not good at being still <laughs> and knowing that he is god <laughs> and so i want us to chat uh tap into that today and um uh we'll, we'll start off with prayer with a word of prayer i'll have you uh do that and then there was a comment i think i posted but real quick let's uh start off the year uh, besides prayer as well, let me just get uh, some of these comments. So Ro is on. She says, hey, hey, the bug is on. Yep, praise hands. All right. Coco, Colleen, awesome. We got the uh, Tim. We got his uh, volume up. Uh, Tim, I want you to meet Saeed. I don't think you met him. I actually had him on last week, a friend of mine. And uh, he came on and uh, shared the word with me um, towards the end of the video. Uh, but that's Saeed. Tim, that's Saeed. Saeed, that's Tim. And Saeed, you were what I am the vine. You are the branch. Apart from me, you can do nada. That's what Tim was saying. Absolutely, brother. Uh, the year of restoration, the year of change, the year to go. Nice. Love that, dude. Well, let's jump right in it. So, Tim, invite Holy Spirit and let's do this. Yeah, well, God, I thank you that you're always here and you're always faithful to us. And I thank you, God, that you're always merciful to our, to our everyday need. And, Father, I just pray that tonight we would catch a glimpse of what you're saying to us um, as as we speak from, uh, from your heart. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Father, for your goodness uh, and your faithfulness. So I think the... Uh, the the little like tagline I had, I'm going to post it here as a comment so everybody can see it and I'll read it and then I'll throw it right off to you. Um, so I put new year. Now what have you considered the white flags that need to be waved in your life? The things you need to surrender wholly to God. Surrendering those things allows us to become unstuck from the past and open to the change and transformation offered by our new life in Christ. So I'm sure we'll touch on that, but I want to, you know, keep it open to whatever God's speaking on you, Tim, and especially everybody else online. Uh, definitely feel free to comment with what we're talking about and we'll throw it on there as well. But yeah, man, what are you, uh, new year now what? It's like, if you don't, because you, you, the reason I said you, you, we didn't talk about it, and yet you started with it was like, man, when you just realize it, you got to start with God, you got to be with Him, and you just got to know every day is with Him, and that's that. It's like that's exactly it. It's a new year. Now what? If if you don't have Him, <laughs> it's going to be a tough year, regardless. I'm sorry, it just is. Yeah, you know, I I had I had some time to reflect on my life. Um, past present and future um right right around christmas time and i don't always do that uh i i think i get sidetracked a lot um right you ever know like you're playing you're playing football and and the referee comes and throws a flag and then and he throws another flag and, and then all of a sudden it's like dude are we even playing football here <laughs> i feel like that's what happens sometimes you're like trying to get in the mode of christmas and thanking god for sending his son and someone's like 
hey, did you guys like put your money in for the the gift exchange or <laughs> or like, hey, like, did you did you did you actually bring that dessert you said you're going to bring or did you just like bluff again this year? Or, you know, everyone's got something to say. Right. And, like everyone's trying to be have fun and, and and whatnot. But it's like it's so easy to get away from from why why we celebrate Christmas, why we celebrate the new year. And so, like, obviously, all of us know why we celebrate Christmas because of God's Son. Um, going on to the New Year, uh, it, it, we're coming right up to the New Year, man. New Year's Eve, and and I'm really thinking, oh wow, like, I, I I'm not gonna party. I'm I'm not gonna. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like I'm not gonna party, and honestly, I don't know what we're even celebrating. I'm looking around. There's all these fireworks tents. And it's crazy, man. People are buying fireworks left and right. Buy one, get one free. <laughs> and, and I'm like, dude, maybe I'm not even American if I don't go buy some fireworks this year. Man, like, <laughs> I, am a, I am a real dud. Like, I went from stud <laughs> dud. to dud. Your firework was a dud. You're a dud. <laughs> I went from stud to dud in, like, <laughs> two years of being married. I'm like, I'm just, I'm turning old, man. I, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> And, uh, you know, I had this, I had this, I had this revelation, um, that's very simple, but it, it was so needed for me. And, and, and God spoke to me and he said, Hey, the world looks forward to one day for yeah. a year. And he said, but my people look forward to every morning where my mercy is new Woo! every single morning. Jesus. So he said, Tim, don't be don't be worried why you're not celebrating like everyone else. You know, don't be so caught up in, in doing everything you can on this one day. Like, all right, now I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm, you know, because honestly, what scripture says is do not boast about tomorrow. You don't know what tomorrow is going to hold. And right. it's, it's, not, it's not necessarily like talking about puffing you up. It's talking about don't talk about tomorrow. Just like... You, you don't know what tomorrow is going to hold. So, That's so it. why don't you just rest in the intimacy and the mercy that God brings every morning. And you know what? Every single morning is a new day, but it's a new life for you. That's, that's what I believe God has been speaking to me. Um, wow. Just for the new year specifically. Yeah. And, and, you know, waking up, it's like, I see my kids and, you know, I got to, I'm the, I'm the morning guy. So I wake up, I make my wife coffee. I make the kids breakfast. I get slobbered on They're, They sit on my face. I find out they have pooped their pants after they <laughs> sit on my face. And it's right. like, sometimes I'm so sidetracked as most of us are in different ways of the entire day. Like if this is how the day is starting, wow. <laughs> you know, like if, if I have to roll out of bed with like diaper face, like, <laughs> you know, and, and so all that to say is like many of us can get distracted by what the, like what our family brings to the table every single morning. But God's been showing me like what, what our family first of all brings is community. And what I believe God is doing is he's bringing the true community back to us and and some of us might have disregarded our family because we live far away. Or some of us might have said, yeah, but my family does, does this and this. But I really feel like God's bringing true family back together. And I believe that he's renewing his mercy in us every morning. And, uh, and I want to give you, uh, Tony, some, some things to say in regards to that. But I really feel like there's a true community coming back for yeah. God's people and, and, and for those of us who are in him. Well, it's, that's so cool. And I'm glad you had that moment with the Lord as he's been showing you that. And um, you were mentioning um, intimacy and then also community and also about being distracted. And and while you were talking, um, before you even said those things, Coco or Col Colleen wrote, she said, this is the year of true intimacy, becoming one with the one. And then she goes on later and says, I was so distracted last year. My vision was so blurred. This year, my main focus will be on him. Praise hands. And I, I just think that's a lot of people were in that boat, you know, um, you know, some people weren't and that's fine. But the best part of that, uh, Colleen, is that you recognize it, you know, 
you recognize it. Like that's such a great place to be at. Like, wow, I recognize that I've been distracted. Wow, I recognize I haven't had my eyes on on the one, you know, because now we can do something about that. Like you can do something about that. You can draw near to him and go back to the one. So that's really cool. And then when Tim, when you talked about community, I was reminded, remember when we uh, we did one, I think, on community and I think we said come unity and we were like, man, come the unity. And and we got to we got to really like we really got to marinate and try to understand or talk to the Lord about what that looks like with our family, with those around us, like maybe the disciples that are around us, the ones that you're, when I say disciples, like your inner circle, your inner circle of people that you're close to and they're, you're pouring into and they're pouring into you and you just have this um, equipping of the saints and encouraging and loving one another. And um, because the world is teaching us um, division, they're teaching us, you know, the um, what's the word instead of the United States of America, it's like the divided states of America, and 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 it's really teaching us to be divided. Okay, the the Christians that believe in the mass, the Christians that don't believe in the mass, and it's like, dude, let's just love each other. Let's do this together, regardless where we stand on either one of those things. Like, let's speak the truth and love and. And I, I believe community um, unity is going to be so big this year. Obviously, intimacy. Um, uh, I shared it last week, and I know I shared it with you, Tim, before. But but I see I see repentance on the horizon. And when I mean on the horizon, I mean today. <laughs> today, choose this day who you will serve. Check, so, <laughs> check, so I see. Check out this. Go ahead. Oh. Nice. Now <laughs> the time is now. I love it, dude. That's a dope watch. The time is now like, dude, like now new year. Now what? Now choose this day. Who will you serve now? Me. And you I know, just hear it, bro. I hear it so loud, dude. Repentance, obedience, and purity. Because one, when we repent and turn back to God and change our mindset and we start thinking on heavenly things, now that'll lead to obedience. Why? Because we're going to be about our father's business. When we're about our father's business, that's going to lead to purity because we're no longer living for ourselves, but we're living for the one. Yeah. You know, I don't know. I, I really feel like 2021 has to be a year of truth. Um, Truth with each other, truth with God. You know, it's yes. all the scripture about being uh, real with one another. And yes. With your brothers and sisters and real with God. And I think that's what God's like in the, I think that's what he's in the business of doing is this kind of washing out all of the um, Christianese, all of the, you know, all of the things that have not said him. Whether it's promotion, hey, you know, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, self-promotion, or if it's um, entertainment, hey, I'm trying to entertain all these unbelievers when they come to my church, or um, the love of, you know, the love of self, you know, which is pride, you know, saying like, oh, man, I'm all about myself, and, and right. everyone needs to look at me, you know, those things all have to be washed out this year, because when truth comes in on the scene, it's it's very, very evident of who's the king. Mm. You know, who's the king? Mm. And, 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 and so many of us are trying to say, well, I'm all about this guy and I'm all about this guy. And, and you know, I'm all about myself. And, you know, I, I don't like to get it, you know, and we all try to like, stand for something and, and i believe if we really stand for the truth like jesus christ we start seeing ourselves differently we start seeing others differently and and the word community we've talked about it come unity like that's an invitation for unity now yes. what, what what you spoke about is what we have been talking about tony and but what about this right what about unity of the spirit of the soul 
and of the body? What about those three things like true resurrection, right? What about true resurrection of your spirit, your soul, and your body all coming together to worship Jesus? You know, there's there's so many of us who say, dude, it's the good. spirit of God's in me and he's so evident. No, 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 no. But like your actions are not following the spirit of God, right. which is what your, Where's body, the food? what your body is doing, you know, and then your soul, you know. Oh, I love Jesus Christ. He, you know, I got saved when I was 18 years old and he's been doing, you know, he did such a good thing in, in 2011 and, and whatnot. And then basically your emotions, your mind and your will, you know, you're like, dude, I don't care what God tells me to do. I'm not doing it because, you know, every time I do it, you know, I, I feel like I have to, I have to go down and get, go bankrupt or I have to right. sell things or or, you know, every time he tells me something, I, I lose more of myself and, and I just can't handle, the, you know, surrender anymore. And, and, and all these excuses for letting go, letting God have our soul. And, and so, you know, if there's anything that, that God as a key word is pointing out to me for this year is that let's invite unity to come by inviting him to cleanse our soul, to cleanse our spirit and to show us how to walk in, in the one scripture that came to my mind last night at like 2 AM was that his word is a lamp into our feet and it's a light into our path. Where are we supposed to go now? We're supposed to come to him. We're supposed to come to his word. Like a lot of, a lot of people that um, are unbelievers that I life coach, I talk to them and I, I tell them, Hey man, they, what recommendations do you have for me to read for this thing and this thing and this <laughs> thing? And, and I always tell them the same thing. I'm like, hey, I just <laughs> encourage you to, to open up the Bible and to, to, to ask God to speak to you. And they're just like, dude, like, I've done it, man. The Bible's so confusing. I just don't understand <laughs> it. And, and, and the last thing that I'm going to say, um, you know, during this section is the fact that God's been showing me that his word is eternal meaning that it stays within us and it creates eternal life but also i can read a book like matthew 7 and i receive it as truth and then god shows me what he wants to do for the rest of the day and it has nothing to do with matthew 7 and so we have to believe that god is moving through his scripture in ways that we could not you know it says that what's impossible with man is possible with God. Amen. We have to believe that no matter what God asks us or invites us to read um, in his word or whatever we read, God's going to start speaking to us because we're receiving what he says. He Amen. starts showing us the path of life. And, and, and I just believe that is what we are going towards is we're either on the path of life or we're not. And it's the invitation hmm. for complete unity to this path of life for us this year. Amen, bro. Real quick, shout out. Uh, somebody from the Philippines jumped on. Her name is Chu. So I just want to give a shout out to Chu. Thanks for coming in all the way from the Philippines. We appreciate that. God bless you, sis. And if you could share it with your fellow peeps, our fellow brothers and sisters, that would be awesome. Um, Dude, you're you are right on and you just said life. And as you were speaking that and saying that, I was thinking as I was sitting here, I was like, man, I'm just getting so refilled with life. Because yeah, yeah, the yeah. truth is alive and sharper. It's alive and active. And as you're speaking, it's alive and active. And I'm recognizing it's alive and active. And I'm recognizing he's real. And I'm recognizing he's in me. And I'm recognizing he's there. And yet he's here. And I'm recognizing I'm here, yet I'm there. I'm recognizing, wow, it's the truly the goodness of God. Like, Wow. And I'm just like so filled as you're speaking. I'm just constantly filled with life. And, and, and I'm filled with life because he is life. It's Jesus, the truth that wow. sets us free. And he is the word. And the word became flesh. And the flesh is now us. And the word is in us. And it's like, bro, I was just getting so pumped up trying to like contain it all. And I'm just like, man, I'm so filled with life. Like wow. life is good, bro. I have to, I have to share a scripture. Do it. What you're saying, Matthew 7, 8, 
for everyone who keeps on asking receives. And he who keeps on seeking finds. And to him who keeps on knocking, the door will be <laughs> opened. Yeah. <laughs> how, yeah. do I, how do I enter into heaven? For everyone who keeps on asking, God, I ask that your presence would come. And then you receive it. He who keeps on seeking, God, I'm seeking you today. I'm not seeking wealth. I'm not seeking success, but I'm seeking you, God. Whoever seeks, finds. And to him who keeps on knocking, God, I'm here, man, and I need you today. God, I need your I need your wisdom, God. I don't know what to do. I need you, God. I need your understanding, right? Those who keep on knocking, the door will be open. It's just... it. I'm sitting here, God spoke to me last night, you know, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything will be added to you. And, I'm, and I've got all these crazy things going on in my life that I'm not going to tell you guys about tonight because you guys get stressed out just listening to it. <laughs> but the answer is better than the conflict. The answer is better than the That's obligation. It. The answer is better Come on, being, come on, uh, being anxious, you know, and there's a reason why he says, Don't be anxious because yes. he's like, I've already given you what you need, I'm just asking you to come, come yeah. to me, all who are weary and weak, and I will give you rest. Come on, man, exactly. <laughs> the, it, the, it, the rest it, is too much for me, man. It's too I much know, so I'm that... just like, I gotta keep going, I gotta keep doing it. God says, No, just I'm just asking you to just stop. <laughs> and recognize, you know, recognize that he's perfect. You know, in, in Matthew 7, 11, if you then are evil, know how to good, to give good gifts and, 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 and to your children, how much more will your father in heaven, perfect as he is, give good and though uh, he says all these words, give good gifts to those who keep on asking him. Yes. You you know what you know what's evil, Tony? Huh? Expecting God to give you something and huh. not believing that He's going to give it to you. That's, that's it. How weird is that? Dang. I expect that you're going to do all these things for me, but I don't want to have any communication with you. I don't want to wake up and sacrifice ten minutes. I don't, you know. The difference is the relationship. And I just believe that is what God is restoring in 2021. A relationship of asking, of, of just those simple things. Believing. <laughs> exactly. Hey, real quick. Hey, Saeed, it was good to see you. He said hi to you, Tim. He's got to bounce out. But we'll see you later, Saeed. Dude, he's good. Like, that's why I had to share that. And you're just... You're just compounding it, and it's just like, dang. I mean, are we kidding? We think we got a problem? Man, we have an answer. <laughs> we have an answer, and the answer is in Christ. And, you know, you just said something. You said you said a relationship, and then you also said, what was that before? Like, um, keep asking, keep knocking, you know, choosing to be with him. And immediately I saw uh, the, the – I, I was taken back into the Bible – where Moses um, is there with the, and he's going to go on the mountain, right? And and the children of Israel, they're all there. And, and, and they're like, yeah, you know what, Moses? That was awesome and all. But you know what? You go up. You go talk to the Lord. You go do all that. We'll just hang out here. We'll just chill out. We'll just kind of wait on you, man, because, man, we're not worthy, man. We're expecting to hear from God, but, you know, you go do it. Because we don't really want to, you know, you go represent us, Moses. Go do your thing, man. Go do your thing. So he goes up. Later on, days later, they're like, Aaron, come on, dude. Moses ain't coming down, man. That dude, wow. is, God just wiped them out, bro. Let's just do our own thing. Let's go melt some gold. Let's go make our own idol. Let's go make our own God. Let's do our own thing, Aaron. Come on, man. Come with us. And isn't that something? Because... That's exactly what you're talking about, bro. See, we could choose to be like them and want everybody else to spoon feed us and go experience the glory and the intimacy with God and try to get fed from them. 
you know what? It's not going to work. It's not going to be enough. You might get experiences and little things here and there. You might go listen to Dan Moeller or Todd White or whoever you're listening to from here on there, Tony and Tim, TNT, whoever you're listening to. And 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 it's only going to feed you for that moment. It's It's good. I'm not saying that it's bad. But if you don't have your own relationship and you're not climbing that mountain and you're not going to see Jesus, you're not going to go see God and talk to him and ask questions like Tim just said in scripture, you're missing out. Because truly, if you seek first the kingdom of God, everything will be added unto you and you will see how abundant his life truly is, man. Yeah. You know, I just I feel like this. Is, I, I want to say something and. I believe the Holy Spirit has given me this word, Woo! not for our church, but for his people. Hey, one body, one church. I, f I, hear, the, I hear the Lord saying that this is a year of no excuses. Yep. You know, no expectations. Those two things. No excuses and no expectations. Mm. No expectations of each other. Without relationship. Wow. You know, no expectations of him without relationship. You right. expect that somebody's going to do something because that's just who they are. But the moment you don't want to be with them anymore, you know, it, it just, it can really cut off the true pure heart of that relationship. Yeah. And so lately God's been teaching me, you know, I can share where I'm at in my life and not expect anybody to help me. Right. You know, I can be honest with my friends. Hey, I'm going through this. I'm going through that. Be honest with my family. And verse 12 of Matthew seven, it says, Whatever you desire that others would do to you and for you, even so do also to and for them. This is the law and the prophets. Mm. So if we want to fulfill as Jesus did the law, if we want to let Jesus fulfill the law through us being here on earth, through an example of him, if we want to prophesy anything, let's prophesy, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. you Amen. Know, serve others. If you ever, if you ever desire to have somebody serve you, make sure you are doing it with a pure heart. Make sure you are doing it first. Don't expect anything without without put without paying it forward and the best thing that we can do in the book of james is draw near to god and then he'll draw near to you first of Amen. all your, first of all with your god before you expect anything out of any human draw near to god and then he'll draw near to you why because if he just came to you all the time we could us all lay in our bed yes we literally all exist laying in our beds from the moment we're born to the moment that we die, we could all lay in our beds. We could just get encountered by God all the day, you know, all day long and roll on the ground and have a great time. But that's what heaven's for. So what? why are we here on earth? If you don't have your purpose, if you don't know now what, I believe now what is to draw near. That's draw it. Near, draw near. Draw that's near. That's it. You can't, you know, Jesus said, I am. He says that he's the book. He's, you know, he is the source of life. He's the source of hope. Yes. You know, draw, drawing to him is like, like the woman at the well in John four, the Samaritan woman, you know, he says, listen, if you come to me, there's a, there's water that will never run dry. That's right. You'll never run dry. Oh, that's dear. right. I went, I went to Andy yesterday and he said he was going to be there at three 30 and he didn't show up. And if we get, if we get so carnal in our minds to think that God is going to abandon us or right. God is going to forget us or God's not going to show up on time. If we start looking at God, as we look at one another, we can literally lose sight of our true faith in him, which is believing that his timing 
is perfect and that there's a river that will never run dry as we yeah. draw on him. No doubt, man. No doubt. And that's, that's, dude, that's where it's at, man. That's where it's at. And you put it, I, I put the scripture here, Galatians 5, 13, 14, for you were called to freedom, brethren. Only do not turn your freedom into an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. In the statement, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And you know what I just saw there as I read that? Dude, it says, for the whole law is fulfilled in one word. Yeah. In the statement, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. So that whole statement is a bunch of words, but it's still one word. Jesus. Jesus is the word. And if we would live and abide in him and from that place, not our motives, not our selfish motives, but the motive of serving him and drawing near to him, like you said, like the now what? <laughs> hey, hey, I had a vision for 2021 and you guys are going to call me a Christmas dude. But I, I literally saw It's a Wonderful Life. As a vision dude. of 2021, 20, as Legit. many of us say, dude, I don't, I don't even know why I'm here. I don't, I, I could even be okay with not even being alive. Some of us would even, you know, go as far to say that because like, I don't even know what's going on. But what's so crazy is God sends in, 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 uh, in the It's a Wonderful Life movie. He sends his, he sends an angel, you know. But in, in our case, he sent his son. <laughs> To show us what's right in front of us, that we That's have it. everything we need, and and I just saw that last scene, you know, where where uh, the guy on It's a Wonderful Life, he's just sitting there, and he James goes, you know what? Everything I've been working for is right in front of my face. <laughs> everything I've been hoping for, I'm trying to please my family. I'm trying to get this job. I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to get yeah. this car. I'm trying to. Oh my God, you've already given it to me. What am I doing? That's oh it, God. man. Everybody comes around and, and, and supports, you know, at the, and I just believe that's, that's what I see for our church, you know, is that God's just going to send supernatural blessing to each one of us. Like the thing that we actually need, he's going to supply. Yes, absolutely. And we believe it. <laughs> Yeah. Like, like, wait a second. God said it. He's going to supply it. He's going to do it. Whether I see it next week, next month or next year doesn't. Let me re, let me go back. Whether I physically see it next week, next month or next year is besides the point because I see it because I see him. That's it. That's it. Like. I'm laying it down. I'm surrendering my life. Like he says, yeah. you know, yeah. Lord, my life is yours. You know why? Because my life sucks. But now I found out it's a wonderful life in you. <laughs> I have everything right in front of me. I have everything. You know, we say this all the time on truth. And Peter said, where else am I going to go, Lord? Why would I scatter? No, I am definitely <laughs> gathering, man, because you have the words of life, dude. And like, I need that around me all day, every day. Yeah. And I'm going to be about your life because your life is my life and my life is your life. And dang it, like Tim said, it's a wonderful life. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's I just feel like I'm supposed to continue a little bit on Matthew 7. I can't get away from this truth. That's it. Keep going. It says, Beware of false prophets who come to you dressed as sheep, but inside there are devouring wolves. You'll fully recognize them by their fruits. Do people pick grapes from thorns or figs from thistles? So so what from what I'm what I'm reading here, you know, this is this is this is a great thing, man. Yes. This is this is a warning to us. Don't get caught up with people that are walking in fear. Don't get caught up in people that are worried about tomorrow. Don't get caught up. Don't don't follow that group. That's it. 
Don't that's fall that group that puts their trust in man. Don't don't go that direction because it don't matter if they've been serving God their entire life, 30, 40 years, you know, like if people's heart and hope is not in Christ and their hope is not in God coming to you this year, if it's in something else, it's not in God. I mean, it's Bro, so stupid and simple, but it's so stupid, simple. And I was just what that's what I just saw. I saw I saw that um if the people you're like hanging out with, like a lot of times, like you just said, and it's not about Christ. And then I, then I saw a business and I said, if they're about their own business, it's not the group guys. It's not the group. Cause we are to be about our father's business and our father's business is all in love. It's speaking the truth in love. It's, it's, it's loving one another as we love ourselves and 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 we the law gets fulfilled and we're free in that and it's like so many people will say yeah i'm doing this for god or i'm doing this for this and i'm doing this for that and i'm but still they're about their own business it's wow. not and 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 your fruit will display that your fruit yeah. will display that like you and i were talking about and i think <laughs> i just was remember i just remember where tim is Tim and everybody else on here listening, we're not called to be fruit inspectors. <laughs> we're not inspecting each other's fruit. We're just we're just encouraging each other, loving each other, and grabbing the fruit that's there, meaning, man, wow, he's so kind. That's awesome. I'm going to taste and see that he is good. Man, wow, the love that I get. Wow, the gentleness. Wow, this. But, like, we're not to be looking at each other and say, man. You know, Tony and Tim, they've been doing this for a while. You know, they should have this kind of fruit by now. And how come they don't have a building yet? Are they going to have a building for truth at some point? Man, I don't know about them. I don't, I think they're a little bit off their rocker. And <laughs> we're not called to be fruit inspectors. Like, we're called to live in Him. We're called to be about our Father's business, man. And when we just do that and our eyes on Him, our fruit alone will speak volumes. And 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 here's where we get mixed up. Wow. We get mixed up because of the world's uh, definition of things. So the world will look at fruit and think of it in like buildings and this and that. And, and God's like, I can care less about that. The fruit wow. I'm looking at is, oh, wow, man, look at my son, man. He's walking in self-control. Wow. He's walking in love. He's walking in kindness and humble. Wow. You see? Like, dude. Wow, man. <laughs> Check this out. Matthew 7 24. Everyone who hears the words of mine and acts upon them, in parentheses, obeying them, will be like a sensible, prudent, practical, wise man who built his house upon a rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and doesn't do them is like a stupid, foolish man who built his house upon the sand. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against that house. And it fell, and great and complete was the fall of it. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the Sermon on the Mount, the crowds were astonished, overwhelmed with wonder. For he was teaching as one who had and was authority. Yes. And did not, and not as the scribes not as the scribes one who was authority so god is calling us in him yes to walk in his authority not just to i declare and decree <laughs> hey it was exactly what we just said so you said the scribes was authority the scribes were fruit inspectors <laughs> how come your guys don't fast I don't know about you, Jesus, man. You got some issues, man. I don't you know why don't you're teaching your over there. Hands. You don't fast. <laughs> He's like, dude, why would they fast right now? They're with the groom. My bride is with the groom, man. They're good. Wow. They're, they're complete you know lacking said? nothing. What's so interesting, Tony, is that unfortunately there are those who will follow the law this year. Yes. Unfortunately, that is the world we live in. You can you can follow the law or you can follow the teacher. Bro. And there's only one teacher. You won't have to call you won't have to call this guy your teacher and this guy your teacher. You're gonna follow the teacher. 
and the law <laughs> is the alternative. That's and, it. This is like you have one choice. And if you go under the law, you got to do it all. You got to do it all. 630 something. <laughs> I like the one that we talked about earlier. All the laws fulfilled in this, in this one word, in this statement. Dude, let's follow Jesus and do that. And it's like you, you just said it too. You know, Jesus lived amongst us on this earth, living, breathing, walking truth. And every single day, the Pharisees and Sadducees are trying to trip him up. <laughs> He's living, breathing, walking truth. And they're having their little hoes. Okay, you're the lawyer, right? All right, man. You're the lawyer. You got to figure this out. We got to catch him in a lie. We got to catch him in a this. We got to stumble him. We got to, come on, we're guys, man. We can stumble him. Look at us. There's 12 of us. We can do this. Every day they set out to prove truth wrong. Dude. Wow. wow. Every day they set out to prove truth wrong. Are we kidding? You know, because they were so locked up in the law and having the quote unquote authority, not realizing Jesus was the authority as the word becoming flesh and to free us from that. Like, wow. wow. Dude. I got to I got to say something. Yes, I know. <laughs> you don't know how many people has tried in this last few months to say things against truth. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know why? Because <laughs> it don't add They've up. been doing it. <laughs> it don't, you know what? Those who have been saying things against the church aren't in church anymore. And so those who are now watching online they're just going to critique online <laughs> right and you know what i'm gonna go back to the beginning of matthew 7 how do we deal with that how do we deal with that do not judge and criticize and condemn others so that you may not be judged and criticized and condemned yourselves for just as you judge and criticize and condemn you will be judged criticized and condemned and in ordinance with the measure you use to deal out to others, it will be dealt out to you again. Wow. Wow. What do you, how, so how do you, how do you actually look into your brother's eyes and not see that small particle and not try to fix it? How do you do that? It says very, very clearly, be aware and consider the beam of timber in your own eye. That's how you ain't going to catch everything your brother's doing wrong because you're are you're allowing god to speak to you and to convict you and to mold you into his son <laughs> so in that in that realization of i don't have any self-righteousness in me yeah. i've allowed his righteousness to be in me we can see a brother's fault and you know we can say but, dude, I got a big timber in my own, man. I'm not even going to start that because then I'm going to be messed with that same little thing in his eye. And then now I have a speck in my eye and a timber in my eye. Yep, exactly. The same measure. That's what uh, Ro put on, the same measure. And so it, I was relating, as you said it, I was relating it to what I said about a fruit inspector. I said, yeah, so so put your nets down. <laughs> You're you're not a fruit inspector. And if you're fruit inspecting somebody right now, start inspecting your fruit. And and then immediately I just I saw I said, that's the whole point. The point is wow. not, to, not to be a fruit inspector, like just to walk in him, abide in him. Stop trying to figure it out and know that he already did it and walk in wow. that like it is finished. You're not a fruit inspector. You're a good tree bearing good fruit by abiding in me, the one who said it is finished. And, and, and if we would believe that one, believe in it, then because we believe in it, we like, man, let's walk in it. And then because we walk in it, we live in it. And we just, dude, we just, we wow. just go. 
We just go as you go. And, and there was another scripture you read earlier, and you just said righteousness not too long ago. And, and that scripture, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added. Is so key. He says his righteousness. It's not ours. It's not yours. It's his. So when people say, what do you say, man? You're perfect? No, I'm seeking first his kingdom and his righteousness. You see, wow. I'm in his righteousness, but I'm made righteous when I'm in his righteousness. That's how it works. Like I'm already disqualified, yet I'm qualified. <laughs> you have to realize, though, that you're disqualified. You know, Tony, that's, that, well, is, that is freedom. Yes. You know, many people decide to deny that they're disqualified and you have to understand that you're disqualified and that he's qualifying you That's in order it. to receive his righteousness i truly yeah. believe that dude legit and when we do then we see holy crap and now because i'm doing that i recognize i'm disqualified but i recognize in him i'm qualified and now i walk in the qualified and now i can receive qualified and i'm like oh my gosh his blood is crying greater things on the mercy seat are you kidding me he says this about me he says this about me what he knew me before i was in my mother's womb oh and gee what he knew me before the foundations of the earth you mean before he spoke the world into existence he knew me what i gotta take him at his word and he says this and this and this and this whoa man i'm so qualified it's not even funny i think i'm just gonna run this thing i'm gonna endure all things and i'm gonna grow up in all aspects of him because it's all in him and through him and from that perspective i'm gonna live this freedom of life this wonderful life that we found out and my identity is in him like lydia just said my identity is him and i'm realizing dang my old identity is what was disqualified but then i found out who i always were in him and he redeemed us back to that if we believe if we take him at his word if we jump for joy and confess with our mouth man homeboy did this for us what the firstborn of many brethren, he did this. Are you kidding me? Come on. <laughs> You're right. Colleen said, he's on fire. Yes. And and Tim's getting something right now from the Holy Spirit. And I just saw, just, the, oh, I saw the bottom go ahead. of the sandal. You saw what? The bottom of a sandal. Uh, bottom of a sandal. And the Lord said, I'm not interested in where you where you've been i'm interested in where you're going <laughs> and dude, that's it i'm interested in where you're going there was a scripture i wanted to read you just perfect Woo! you just lobbed it up for me here we go <laughs> tim throws the lob to tony here comes tony's going in for the dunk the scripture is joshua 1 3 every place on which the sole of your foot treads I have given it to you, just as I spoke to Moses from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even as far as the great river, the river wow. Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and as far as the great sea toward the setting of the sun will be your territory. No man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Wow. Just as I have been with Moses, I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous, for you shall give this people possession of the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Are we ready to take what's rightfully ours? All of it. Bro, he gave <laughs> you, you want to know the craziest assist for welcoming someone to heaven? So I was like, where are you going, man? What are you doing? You got to do this. You got to Hey, man, I'm going to heaven. That's where I'm going right now. Mm-hmm. I'm going to heaven. You have to know where you're going. Dude. To lead anyone. That's and it. You know, I asked God two days ago, Tony, that word you just said, man, I want you to, I want you to post that. And I want that to be this week what we study. 
That scripture, Joshua? That scripture, that was a heavy scripture. Yeah. I believe that if we really take the time to study that scripture, I'm talking about reading it every single day. As many times as you need to read it, read it. Amen. You got to read it. You got to believe it. And you got to speak it. And then you'll be it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Living epistles, baby. Come on. You got to live it. You can't live it, though, unless you read it. The, the whole key there is living. Living epistles <laughs> to be read by all men. I'm telling you what, guys. There's an invitation to heaven this year, and I'm just telling you, you're either on the train or you're not on the train. And if you're not on the train, there's an open invitation. You don't, you don't have to do anything in your own strength. That is the grace and the mercy of God. Yeah. You, don't have, you don't have to pay a bride price to be the bride. That's right. You just have to welcome yourself to the one that's welcoming you. You have to believe that you're forgiven. You have to believe that where you've gone, where you've been, it don't matter. Yep. It don't matter what you said two minutes ago. It don't matter what you thought about that person at the grocery store. That's it don't it. matter what word came out of your mind and, and what finger flipped up when, when that person cut you off earlier today. Uh -huh. It don't matter yep. about where you're going. I'm not talking about being loose with your lips. I'm not talking about being loose with your actions. I'm talking about being <laughs> true to the vision <laughs> of God. That I'm headed in this direction, and I'm with God, and He's with me. We ain't gonna do anything. That's it. That's outside of what He's saying. If you're <laughs> if you're good at if you're good at following the law, if you were good at following the law last year, guess what? I want to encourage you this year to follow the the one that fulfilled it. If Man. you were good at following the law last year, this year I want to encourage you to come in. And start following the one that fulfilled it. Guess what's going to happen in your life? You're not going to want to go back. That's it. Freedom, baby. You ain't going to go back. You can't go back. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He doesn't yep. let you go back. I told somebody, I said, you know what I believe for you? I believe that because you've invited the Holy Spirit in your life as this elevator, you're going up. There's no way you can go back down once you're going up. You can go right. to the top and press the button. You know, but if you're headed up, how many of you try to get on the elevator after you press up? You can't try to go down. It's going to go up. That's it. And, you know, <laughs> you said <laughs> you said uh, that we, we know where we're going. Like, what, what if you believed you believe what you believe about God? You take God at his word and you believe him, and, and, and you, you, you believe because you know where you're going. What's up, Harley? You believe, and you know where you're going, but then when you need a little more oomph, and maybe that just doesn't do it for you, you don't just believe where you're going, but you believe where you already are. Yes. You know who's in your elevator with you. You're like, wait a second. He says I'm seated in heavenly places. <laughs> and you're like, oh, man. This is too much, Lord. I was like, and, and, and then it just, it helps reset you and, and helps like, okay, yeah, wait a second. It's not about me. It's about him and this and that. And man, I'm going to take him at his word. And, and I see here, everybody's like, man, this is so tasty. Wow. What a meaty word. I'm eating this up. Lydia's like, I'm on the plane. Gary's like, I'm on the train. <laughs> and I'm like, choo, choo, all aboard. Come on, sinners. <laughs> Come on, thing. Come on, murderers. Come on, rapists. She's got her fruit. Hey, don't inspect it. Just believe she's got some good fruit. <laughs> I was, you know what? It if I start inspecting it, look at it. It's got gummy everything on it. You know? We are not hey, fruit inspecting. That fruit, that fruit is so good, they're eating it. They're tasting and singing. The Lord is good. Tony, I've got to take care of these. Babies. You're good. I want you to keep it going. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to wrap it up. I'll see you next week. Yeah, dude. Love you guys. Right, love you too, brother. Later, bro. Man.
So, so good. So, so good. I know you guys have been blessed. I'm going to keep going just for a few minutes, but that was awesome. Uh, what a great word for 2021. Uh, God bless. Father God, we just lift up Tim and Claudia and Hartley and Otto, Lord, that you just you just keep showing them that you are the wonderful life, Father God, and that they are living the wonderful life in the midst of diaper changes and blowouts. <laughs> and throw ups and all of that stuff, Father God, that it's a wonderful life. And they are reminded that it's a wonderful life in you, Father God. And they give you all glory and praise through the storm and through just everyday occurrences, Father God. And they just keep pointing to you and keep pointing to the finished work and just believe in it, walk in it, and just continue to grow from faith to faith, not growing weary but hand to the plow, moving forward, not looking back. In the name of Jesus, amen. <laughs> so good. Gary, I see you, brother. <laughs> choo, choo. That's what I was thinking. I said, the train's coming. Watch out. All aboard. The train is here. The train is Jesus, and he's coming back for his bride. But just as awesome as that is, as him coming back, What's so awesome, even, I mean, that's awesome. And just as awesome as that is that he's alive, that he's here, that he's with us, that we are already on the train. You can choose to live your life from the place that I am on this train. You know what the train is? The train is Jesus. The train or the plane is Jesus. I left you. I got the plane. <laughs> the plane or the train is Jesus. And, and we are on the narrow way and few find it. So if you found it in him, man, that's awesome. Now let's be about our father's business so we can go after the many that maybe have not found them yet. And let's go after this. Let's go after it. Let's uh, share the good news with them. And, and something I was reminded of, I wanted to tell Tim, but something that I was reminded of is, is what would it look like if we took the time to not only hear somebody as we're hearing maybe them talk about their life or what's going on and you just say you just say man like they're sharing like something about their past or whatever and they're like man i just don't know and this that the other and you just look in their eyes you hold their hand and you say you know what brother you know what sister i forgive you i forgive you i i hear what you're saying about this that and the other but i forgive you I for, well, who are you to forgive? Man, Jesus said, we can forgive because he forgave. So if he forgave and we know we're forgiven, then we can forgive others around us. And I'm telling you, there's power in that because not many people receive forgiveness. Not many people hear that. So I believe God is going to use us in a mighty way. As we just continue to live in him, abide in him, walk in him, and he's just going to lead the way. Like, he can't not. I mean, he's living, breathing truth. He is inexhaustible. He is life. And it's what people are looking for. Yep, absolutely, Ro. I'm going to post some of these comments here. It's exactly what people are looking for. They're looking for forgiveness. They're looking for life. They're looking for truth. They're looking for love. They're looking for all the fruits of the spirit. They're looking for living epistles. Us, that we could be read by everybody around us, meaning that our actions speak louder than our words. And yes, our words are powerful. And yes, we're going to speak life into people. We already know that. We're going to speak into the dry bones and we're going to do that. And we're going to speak into people's lives. But just as important as that is that we believe it for ourselves. We've spoken into our own life and in, into each other's life, but we've spoken into our own lives and we walk this thing out. And then people are watching us from a distance. They're seeing how we respond in trials and tribulations. They're seeing how we respond when we go through the fire, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They're, they're seeing how we respond when the giants arrive like David. They're, they're seeing how we respond when the Red Sea is there and we have nowhere to go. They're waiting to see see and looking at a distance as we respond to everything around us, everything around us. And they're waiting to see 
How are we going to get through this? And every single time when we point to Christ, every single time when we give glory to God, every single time we come in love, every single time that we do not grow weary, every single time we just walk in him, they see Jesus in us. They see Jesus. And when they see Jesus, they see freedom. And when they see freedom, they want that. They want that. They're like, man, tell me more about your Lord. Tell me more about Jesus. Tell me more about how you can walk the way you walk. And boom, you share your testimony. You share whatever God gives you and pour into them. And there it is. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Amen. So, so good. Let's see what you guys wrote here. You guys been on fire right in here. I, I saw all of your comments. I know I didn't get to respond to all of them. Wherever you go, that's ground. That ground is yours to take. Amen. Yes. We had some good laughs. Amen. Amen. Uh, whoops. Where did that scripture go? Oops. It's up here. Joshua 1.3. Yep. Joshua 1.3. I'll post the uh, whole scripture later um, for everybody. I left you all. I got the plane. That was good. Um, that's what people are looking for. Amen. Let's set them. Let's let's set them fear. Let's set them free from fear. I think that's what she was gonna say. Yep, there it is. Free from fear. Let's set them free in Jesus' name. And the truth is what's gonna set them free. We gotta stay in it and abide in it. Amen. Amen, Lydia. Amen, Ro. Amen. Freedom. Freedom, baby. So. I guess that's it. I'm not going to be uh, uh, long winded. And um, I think we're going to roll with that. There was something else I was going to share, but I think I'll wait for that for next week. I don't feel a pressing on it. Um, I think we're at a good standpoint here. So, uh, man, it's been so good. This is the first truth of 2000. Uh, obviously, every day is truth. We know that. Um, but this is our first message of truth here at Truth Church um, this Tuesday. So that was awesome, 2021, ringing in the year, obviously with Jesus, our Lord. And man, I know you guys are excited as much as I'm excited. Let's not be about our own business, but let's be about our Father's business as we're doing our business. Meaning as, <laughs> as we go about our Father's business, we're gonna do what we need to do, but we're doing it unto Him. We're doing it for Him and we're doing it with our eyes on Him. And, and ultimately to give him the glory for even whatever job we're doing or whatever we're doing. Lydia writes, uh, good word, the joy and fire of the Lord was with us this day. Amen, Lydia. I felt the same thing. God bless you, sis. Um, uh, thank you so much just for, for your hunger um, and everything that you're doing in other people's lives. It's not going unnoticed, Lydia. Uh, you know, I just hear the father saying, well done. You know, that he sees all the things you do, Lydia, that most people don't see, man. And he sees it because he sees your heart and he sees your heart and the motive behind your heart. And the motive behind your heart is not that you get recognized, but he's letting you know he recognizes you. He sees you in all those things that you're doing, though man and women might not see it around you. And they may not um, pat you on the back for it or, or give you thank yous. But the Lord is saying thank you. Well done, my good and faithful servant. I see you. Amen. So, uh, man, wow, that was great. Um, I, hey, let's like, like Tim said, it's a wonderful life. Let's believe it's a wonderful life. Let's believe it. Let's walk in it. We are already have the victory. It is finished. Let us be reminded of it. And let's continue to stir each other in love and good works. Because that's why we're gathering as the church. One body, one faith, one God, one church, right? So, and, and the church gathers to stir one another in love and good works. And that's what we're doing. Thank you. Those words I always long to hear. Oh, that's awesome, Lydia. I, I really felt that and I had to share it. And uh, that's awesome. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. You're so good. Thank you for knowing us. 
Thank you that you always knew us. And thank you for sharing these words to us that we could share with one another, that we would step out in faith and say, well, I'm hearing this. I'm just going to say it and 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 know that it's from you, Lord. And, and we just thank you, Lord, for everything that you're doing here with our with the church, with truth, but with the one church, your church, Father God. And we just thank you um, as you propel us in 2021. Um, not only is it a new year, but let us be walking in the new mindset. The new mindset is about our father's business. The new mindset is the renewed mind in him. And the only way we're going to find out what that renewed mind looks like is by getting in his word and becoming the word. When we read the word, we, we live the word, we become the word because we're eating the word. You see how it, how it all works? And then we're, we're, we become those living epistles and everybody's going to be reading us. They're going to be reading us as if we're walking Bibles, <laughs> but we're walking, living, breathing truth like Jesus because he's abiding with us. Amen. All right, guys. Love y'all. That was awesome. I feel like pumped up. I'm ready to rock and roll. That was great. So I love you guys. Let's do this again. Truth uh, next Tuesday, seven o'clock. Uh, like I told you, um, we'll start um, seeing about getting what we kind of want to talk about. We'll have it earlier in the week. So maybe look for that in the next couple of days. I might even get it to where I can schedule it. I think I was able to do it with this one, but I only did it like an hour and a half before we went live. But maybe going forward, I will already have it set a few days before. Um by God's grace, have it done a few days before, meaning that it will have a set schedule of, hey, we're going on at this time and we're going to talk about this. Come join us. This way we can kind of share it as an event and be like, hey, guys, check this out. You know, these guys are going to talk about fear or this or that. So, yeah, man, Gary, I love you, bro. Bug, good night. Love you, too. And uh, Lydia, good night. God bless you, fam. G-Man, love you, brother. Choo-choo. Get on that train. Planes, trains, and automobiles. <laughs> Love you, Gary. God bless you guys. I'll see you guys next week. Love y'all. I'll post that scripture of Joshua here shortly.